let me show you a step-by-step -step instruction that you can follow to take trades with moving average. Then I will show you exactly how you do it by some real chart examples later. Now look at this. Alright, this is the instruction guide that I just created that you can follow when you t try to analyze charts by moving average. So as it says here, first check the bigger time frame. Right, check the bigger time frame. And what you can check on that bigger time frame is first, you check the direction of the moving averages, whether if they are pointing towards the same direction or not. If you're showing like two moving averages or three moving averages, like 20, 75, and 200, make sure they are all pointing towards the same direction in bigger time frame first, like daily or weekly chart. And like I mentioned on part 4, if they are not pointing to the same direction, that simply means it's not a trade chance. So you have to wait until they all point towards the same direction or look at other pairs and find if they are also pointing towards the same direction or not. So secondly, you identify the resistance and support and also trend lines or channel lines on that bigger time frame, right? So again, in bigger time frame, you look for a chart or pair in which all the moving averages are pointing towards the same direction and also draw resistance or support lines or trend lines or channel lines. And this is basically a part of a preparation I do every time I open up a new chart with moving average or Ichimoku Kinkohyo or GMMA or any indicators that tells me the direction of a trend. And it's very effective to know which direction to trade to run and extend the pips of profit. So if you haven't done this, make sure you do this first every time you open up a new chart to know exactly which direction you want to take trades. Then you can go to a lower time frame chart. If you look at the bigger time frame as daily, then go to like one hour chart and check these five points. Just like on the upper time frame, on lower time frame too, you can check the direction of the moving averages and see if they are also pointing towards the same direction or not in the lower time frame. And also, just like the bigger time frame, draw lines and see if the price is close to any of the lines. And if you do this, also check whether the current price level is somewhere closer to the bigger time frames, support or resistance lines. Because when it's close, then that means the price might reverse from that point uh, to the upper side or downside. So every time you look at the lower time frame chart, make sure if the price is somewhere close to the resistance or support or trend lines in bigger time frame, okay? And then check the chart formations and price actions of the market, like thrust up or pin bars, you know, things like that, I explained on the price action videos. Then as it says here on the fourth point, you wait and see if the price is going to be either resisted or supported by the moving averages. Because when the market is on a bull trend and when it's steady, the price keeps supported by the moving average and moves up. And when a trend is steady bearish, the price tends to be resisted by the moving average and keeps going down. So check if the price has been resisted or supported by the moving averages as well. And also with that, check the higher highs, higher lows or lower highs, lower lows on the market. This is also the very basic but powerful ways you can check to see if the market is currently on a trend or not. Also this is important but check if you, you see any triangle range on the market. I talked about it on the previous part 4 but I will touch deeper on this video too about this. So look for a triangle formation like triangle range formed by the moving averages in the market because when you find the triangle range in the market, uh, the market might be in the middle of the pushback or pullbacks. And if you have done all these, you should be able to identify exactly when you should take trades and where you should trade and also which direction you should trade. So this is the basic step-by-step -step formula that you can follow when you analyze charts before trading and what exactly to check on upper and lower time frame charts. And you have to be do these unconsciously. I'm doing this unconsciously while I do my analysis every day, every time on moving average or Ichimoku Kinkohyo or whatever indicators I use. I do this unconsciously. 
Well, I'll be explaining step-by-step -step procedures like this on Ichimoku Kinkohyo next January, so you can stay tuned for that. But basically, you know, basically this is the basic formula of procedures that you can follow to analyze charts by trend-related indicators. And if you want to be good at trading, you need to get used to see charts like this and think like this to the extent that you can do all this unconsciously every time you look at the chart. Just like you know, speaking your own language or just like riding a bicycle, you keep following these steps you know, again and again to be able to all these you know, unconsciously eventually. Then you will have an ability to instantly know what works, what doesn't work, and what you really need to look at on the market. Now let's, let's uh, be practical. Let me show you a chart example and see how you can actually apply this formula and find a trading edge on the market. Look at this chart. This is a bigger time frame chart and I pointed three different situations A, B, and C here. First of all, look at the overall market movement. Uh, the red area here is when all the moving averages are in perfect order, meaning all the moving averages are pointing towards the same direction, right? Downwards in this case. And from the candlesticks, if you look at the moving averages, uh, from the candlestick, it's short, mid, right here, and also long periods are aligned beautifully here, like a rainbow. And when you see this, it's a confirmation that the market is on a steady bear trend. And what this yellow area next here means is that in this yellow area, it's the pushback stage while the market is going down. Like the candles are in between the moving averages. Um, if you take a look at it closely, the short term moving average right here and also the long term moving averages from here is forming triangle, right? And when the market is showing like this, remember what's going to happen? Uh, remember what I said earlier on the previous video? When you see this kind of triangle, what's going to happen uh, is uh, it's going to be no direction, right? Uh, the, the market has no direction and goes up and down randomly without any solid trend direction. And this is exactly when you don't want to take trades. Then what's going to happen next is if you look at the moving averages again, all the moving averages are aligned beautifully from short mid and long term period on this blue background area. So again, in the red area here, uh, all the emirates are aligned and in this yellow area, they were not aligned like long term and mid term are pointing down, but short term is only going up, right? So they are not aligned on, in this yellow area and on the blue area next, they became aligned again. Now, if we were down here on the red area, and if you think the market is already gone to the downside, if you saw the market like that, then you might think, oh, I missed the trade chance because the market is already gone to the downside, you know? Um, however, if you think like that, that means you are still a newbie because a trend tends to persist. And if it continues, then there might be another chance that all the moving averages are aligned towards the same direction again in the future, right? So the lesson here is whatever time frames you look at, after you see this kind of spike here, then you better create the next scenario and always wait for the next trade chance. Because you don't always have to capture a place like here, you know, at the very top of the market and sell right off from here. You don't have to. Especially if you are not profitable yet, you better not try to capture a spot like here. In Japan, we say don't eat the head and tail of the fish. Just eat the body part only because it's the most delicious part. So for example, when you eat a fish, you don't eat the head and tail, right? The body itself is just enough and that's actually the most delicious part. So rather than trying to enter a place like here or here, you know, at the very top, or very bottom of the chart, what's more important is the ability to confirm the trend direction and ride on it because a trend tends to continue and be persistent. You know, this is very, very basic but very important in trading. Like it goes down from here and consolidate and goes down again and it keeps the momentum just like on this chart. Of course, there are times when the trend remains short 
um, so it depends but it's more important that you have an image of the continuous trend in the market and try to write on it and with that being said now there are three situations here as I called uh, A, uh, B and C here so uh, when all the moving averages um, get together uh, start to get close here uh, that's circle A and B is when the price touches the short term MA and C is also when the price touches the short term MA um, let's take a closer look at the situation A on this video and let me show you how you can analyze charts in lower time frame as well now look at this capture this capture is actually the same chart same bigger time frame with the actual analysis on it this time for the circle A analysis so listen carefully now here if you look at this chart first you can draw a blue line here like this the market has been supported a couple of times here previously and especially if you look at it here at this point uh, from this low the market renewed the previous high upwards right like this and so this blue support line is also touching these lows here right uh, previously so one thing you can expect is most likely when the market touches on this blue level next time it might be supported again or if it breaks it downwards it might be resisted at this price level next time the role reversal might happen like I explained on the price action part 7 the role reversal might happen and the price might keep going down after that because uh, this low right here is very important because this is a low that broke the recent high upwards so we can say that this support right here is pretty strong so as time goes by the market actually broke this line downwards here so the next thing you can expect is it might be resisted here next time and also you can draw a descending trend line like this on this uh, yellow line which is also another confirmation that the price to be resisted here and if you look at this area like I said earlier uh, this is a triangle formation uh, you know the long term and mid term MAs are going down while the short term MA is going up and the candles are in between those moving averages so in this case you never place a sell but as you keep watching the price gets close to the blue line and also the descending yellow trend line while it's on this blue resistance line here so when the price actually touches on this line on these lines it would be a great sell chance and if that's the case what you can expect next is you can expect all the moving averages start to point downwards meaning um, all the you know the trend will still persist to the downside so by combining all the lines and price actions you know this is a great entry chance for placing a sell right here and this is the initial analysis on the bigger time frame okay we, we don't place a sell yet because this is just the, just the initial analysis on the bigger time frame and now you go on to look at the lower time frame chart and find a trading edge on the market so let's take a look at the lower time frame chart to capture the exact sell chance in the market I will zoom in the circle A to a lower time frame and it's gonna look like this here we go now these gray boxes here and here are when all the moving averages are getting perfect order in this smaller time frame chart and as you can see when the market is ready for a breakout usually it becomes a perfect order like this so after the range it gets perfect order and the price goes down and then after consolidation again right here um, after the break you know um, the moving averages get perfect order and the price keeps going down like this so when the trend persists it repeats a cycle like this and also in this lower time frame chart if you look at the range here uh, there was a channel line like this on these yellow lines so this can be another confirmation that the market is in a range slightly retracing back up and when the price actually breaks it down um, you see a perfect order on this now let me tell you one important thing about moving average the moving average is basically slow in terms of uh, providing signals because as you can see here for example when you notice it's a perfect order uh, like at this point the market already went all the way down here right 
And similarly here too, when you notice the perfect order here, the market is already all the way down here. So like I said before, moving average cannot be so reliable when it comes to giving trading signals, especially like cross signals, like gold cross or dead cross. I think they are usually too slow to trade. So rather trying to take positions by those cross signals, you can use them as a confirmation of a direction of a trend. And so is a perfect order. You can take those cross signals as a confirmation of a persistent trend, but not the signals to take trades. So again, just because you see the perfect order, you cannot just jump into the market and place sell or buy just based on that. And that's like a trade of a newbie. So instead of trading like that, you take positions based on other confirmations like price actions or Bollinger Bands or other volatility related indicators rather than using this kind of a trend related indicators to enter the market. And that's why you have to draw lines and identify where the price is most likely going to be supported or resisted. In this case, like I mentioned earlier, there is a blue line right here. And also there is a yellow descending trend line from the top, right? And as you look at this lower time frame, the price gets close to the blue resistance line while it's slightly going up within the channel. And when the price actually touches on these lines, you look at the price actions and place sell accordingly. And in that case, you expect the moving averages to become a perfect order as a result to confirm the continuing downtrend. Uh, remember, moving average is good at showing you a trend direction and trend strength and the break even point. But in my opinion, not really a good one to entry because I think there are indicators that show you the market trend and also there are indicators that show you the market volatility and also the entry timings. And this moving average is the one for capturing the trend direction. <laughs>